Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Thank you for everybody who's already here. So today we are going to talk about our project that we, that we have been working for a very long time. So without wasting any time, let me invite the first presenter that is Amma. Miss, uh, can, can you see this? Can you see this? PowerPoint? Miss? Uh, yes. Uh, can you see this PowerPoint? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Ama. I, and I am a representative a representative of uh, from group two to present about the Fraser group. Uh, for the first one, uh, it, it uh, is interested in. Uh, it means uh, showing curiosity or concern about something or someone having a feeling of interest. Uh, for example, I am interested in taking a medical course, but where should I start? So for the for the question. I am interested in music and music and movies and as a hobby, I am addicted to searching for CDs, VCDs and DVDs in whatever places I find them. So the answer for the specific is C. For the next question, uh, number two book, Kinon, uh, it means very enthusiastic or excited about something. Uh, interested in something and enjoying it. For example, I am keen on reported style of pictures. For the question, uh, I know the Irish were traditionally keen on the idea of themselves as a variable, sociable, sociable sort. The answer for this question is A. And uh, this is the, the graphic use for points, the, the picture. Uh, for the third question, uh, sit off. Uh, it means uh, thoroughly, thoroughly annoyed or exasperated by someone or something. Uh, for example, Messi is sick of playing football. He wants to play badminton. For the question, but now Amanda was sick of being the sweet and an aggressive one all the time. Uh, the answer for this question is uh, B. Uh, for the question number four, uh, phone off. Uh, it means having a liking, having a liking for or love of uh, something or someone. Number two is doing something a lot. Uh, for example, she's one of asking silly question, which means uh, she like to ask silly question to everyone. Uh, for the question, Haris is one of playing video games. That's all he does in his free time. The answer is C. Question number five, big fan of, which means an admirer, someone who really likes something. For example, I am a big fan of Zendaya and Kylie Jenner, uh, which is uh, the artist in the US. Uh, US. For the question, I am a big I'm a big fan of jogging. So almost every day I do it in, my, in the morning. The answer is A. Number six, fed up with, which means very tired of something, angry about something that has continued for a long time. For example, I'm fed up with all these delays. 
for the question Samantha is fed up with her whole with, fed up with her whole phone because it is always broken and needs to be repaired. Uh, question number seven, enthusiastic about, uh, which means having also showing intense and eager enjoyment, interest or approval. Example, Farisha is enthusiastic about the musical audition next week. She can't wait for it. The question, you don't seem very enthusiastic about the party. Don't you want to go, don't you want to go tonight? In my ass. The answer is B. Uh, number eight, uh, tie off. It means fed up, sick off, or had enough of. Example, I am tired of being alone. Uh, for the question, Arif, why do you seem to not enjoy the game? Are you? Uh, for this last question, uh, it has multiple answer. Uh, we have a uh, number one, tired off, crazy about, fed up off, on and bought with. Uh, and from this answer, there is, uh, there are three, there are three phrases that there is this three meaning, which is uh, tied off, fed up off, and bought with. So the answer for this question is actually C. So uh, that's all for me. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for a very wonderful presentation from the first presenter. Uh, so, uh, let me invite the second presenter, presenter that is Hasman. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am the representative from group 3. Group. Do, do you see it? Do you guys see it? Uh, yes. yes. My group will present about expression and verb with keep. Let's start off with keep in mind. The meaning of keep in mind is to remain aware of something. For example, for example if you want to aware, remain aware of your friend about homework, you can say keep in mind about your homework. Second is keep someone company. For example, you have a friend come to your house, you, you need to keep it company. Your mother will say keep company means in company or spend time with someone. Is it is it clear? Yes. The third one is keep on something. Continue to do something. The meaning is continue to do something. Next is keep to yourself. To keep something as a secret. This is something like promise, so you need to keep it to yourself. Next one is keep still. To refrain, to from moving very much or at all. For example, you can do while you take vaccine, you need to keep still to make the process easier. Next is, next is keep finger crossed to hope that things will happen in the way that you want them to. Next is keep promise to fulfill one's promise.
nine six keep up with my progress of the same rate with someone for example you have a friend um, the uh, next is keep an eye on someone or something to watch someone or something for example your mom told you that to keep an eye on your younger brother or younger sister the next is keep off keep off do not walk or step on something for example in school lanyard there's always said to keep off from spitting or walk on the grass next is keep to something you stay within the limit of something keep something up persist at something anish do you hear it Yes, yes, very clear. Next is keep up. For example, this is always for privacy purposes. For example, you keep up your younger brother or brother from keeping you from getting into your room. The next is keep from. To stop yourself from doing something or something like you, know, you smoke you need to keep from smoking next is keep somebody in to keep someone from going up from going out for example you keep some next is keep something around to keep something near you, near you. Now is the question. Number one. She keep asking me question the whole time. The answer is A. She keep down. She keep and the answer is C. She keep on asking me question the whole time. Keep on means always continuously. Next one is I like to keep my ex employee. You never know when you might need a reference. The answer is A. Like to keep in with mean you want to stay in contact with the ex-employee the third one i read papers to keep what's happening in the outside world the answer is a to keep up with the fourth i don't want everyone to know so if you could keep it yourself i did appreciate it the answer is C, to keep it on yourself. It's also the same as keep it, keep yourself. Five, for heaven's sake, let's keep the point or we'll never reach any decision. The answer is A, for heaven's sake, let's keep to the point or we'll never reach any decision. Six, I prefer to keep argument about money. The answer is D, I prefer to keep up argument about money. Seven, you must eat 
You must eat to keep your strength. The answer is B, to keep up. Lastly, find the synonym of the word. Keep an eye on. The answer is B, wash over. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a very mm -hmm. nice presentation. That is a very colorful slide. Uh, but this is uh, a reminder for the other presenter. Uh, please uh, present your work mm -hmm. at least five minutes. Uh, that's all. Uh, let's we move on to the to the to the next presenter. That is Uma. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, hello, uh, wait, wait, yeah. uh, uh, Anis, can you see this? Uh, Yes, I can see it. Wait. Uh, sorry, I just realized that we have to do some PowerPoint. So um, forgive me because I don't have enough time to uh, prepare this presentation. So, uh, okay, let's get on with it. So, um, Assalamu alaikum. And today uh, I'm going to present. Uh, my uh, our phrasal verbs, which is get and put. So, firstly, we want I want to show you about get. So, as you can see, um, I hope you guys can see it. Uh, get has a lot of uses. Firstly, um, get around to doing something. Uh, the meaning of it is to do something that you have been intending to do it to do for some time. For for example, first. I meant to play soccer this evening, but I do not get around to do to doing it because it is raining. Meaning is, I do not get chance to play soccer this evening because it is raining. Uh, number two is, finally, Clara get around to clean her house, which is meaning is, um, she finally get chance to clean her house. Uh, that's, that's it. And uh, number two, get along or get on with. Uh, the meaning is, if you get along or get on with someone, you have a friendly relationship with them. You can also say that two people get along. For example, uh, they seem to be getting along fine. Meaning is, they seem to have a good relationship. Uh, number two, she really, she never really got on with her sister. That means she have a bad relationship with her sister. Okay, and number three is um, get by. Meaning is to manage to live or do a particular thing using the money, knowledge, equipment, it and anything else that you have for example mr sam does not earn a lot of a lot but he managed to get by the meaning is although mr sam does not earn a lot he manages to survive on his own number two is uh, we can just about get by in japanese meaning is they can speak basic japanese number four is uh, get over the definition is to deal with or gain control of something. Um, the example number one is Tom managed to get over his math problem and managed to get A+. Plus. So the meaning is Tom successfully overcame his math problem. Number two is she said because her pet just died but she will, never, she will get over it meaning she will recover from her sadness. Okay. Number five. Get away with it. 
let's get away with. The first the definition is to steal something and escape with it. The example is the robbers got away with ten thousand dollars during the bank robbery yesterday. Meaning is the robbers managed to steal the money and escape without being arrested. Uh, the definition number two is to receive a relatively light punishment. Uh, example, he was lucky to get away with only a fine after what he had done. Meaning is, he only gets light punishment instead of a heavy one. The definition number three, as you can see down here, to do something wrong and not be punished for it. Uh, the example is, um, don't be tempted to cheat. You'll never get away with it, said the teacher. Meaning, if you cheat, try to cheat during the test, you'll be punished in the end. So, um, this is our quiz uh, for the first phrasal verb, which is get. We only make four quiz. And another phrasal verb, we will make another four quiz. So, the first question is, the thieves got with several thousand pounds. The answer is C, got away. And... Oh, Okay, uh, this, this is number two. Number two, her family is very kind. They all, each other. The answer is C, get along with. Number three, it took him a fortnight to get his pneumonia. The answer is D, over. And lastly, number four, I find it very hard to get on my salary. The answer is C. Bye. So that's all I got to say about the phrasal verb get. So I hope you guys understand about phrasal verb get. So, um. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Stop sharing. And. Ah, okay. So this is about phrasal verb put. As you can see, uh, put has a lot of examples and their own definition. First is to put out. Uh, it means extinguish. For example, the firefighters are trying their best to put out the fire. So yeah, you can see in the picture. Uh, the definition number two is uh, to put something in a place where someone will see it so that they can use it or have it. For example, I put out of the birds in cold weather. And the definition number three is um, to place something outside your house. For example, we usually put our shoes out. That is simple. Okay, uh, number two is put aside. Uh, the first definition is to save or keep something such as money or anything else. It usually, is, it is money uh, to be used at a later time. For example, she has been putting aside some money for a vacation. Uh, definition number two, to stop worrying or thinking about something for example we need to put these problems aside for now and get the work done okay understand i hope you guys understand okay uh number three is put off so the first is it is it's a verb to deter annoy or repel uh example is I don't know if you realize how much you put people off with your attitude. The definition number two is uh, to make someone reluctant or averse to something. For example, the flu put me off food for several days in a row, which means she, she didn't have an appetite to eat the food.
And the last definition is um, to delay doing or dealing with something uh, to procrastinate instead of doing something. Uh, for example, why did I keep putting off working on this essay? Now I'll be up all night writing it. Okay, so number three is um, put up. Uh, the first definition is to build something such as a wall, fence, or house. Uh, for example, John was in the garden putting a fence up. As you can see in the small picture here, he was putting up his fence in the garden. Uh, definition number two, to fix a picture or notice onto an upright structure such as a wall. For example, I put a few posters up to make the room look less bare. So yeah, you could see some poster here. Okay. Uh, so definition number three is to increase the value or price of something. For example, several of the banks have decided to put up their interest rates. Okay, uh, we understand. And lastly, put up with. Uh, definition is to accept someone or something unpleasant in a patient way. For example, I will not put up with your bad behavior any longer. Uh, so that's all about uh, Fraser put. Okay, so about the quiz, the first question is, I can't help anymore, he's driving me crazy. The answer is A, put up with. Uh, number two, please, the milk when you're finished with it. Uh, the answer is C, put back. Uh, number three, can we... The meeting until Wednesday, please. The answer is D. Put off. And number four. I, a beautiful dress and my high heels. The answer is A. Put on. So, um, that's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a very clear and simple presentation. So let me invite the next presenter, that is Zayana. Um, Kijia. Kijai, kijai, kijai. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Kejap slide tak masuk pula <laughs>
Uh, Zayana, are you okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so today, uh, I as a representative of my group will present about present book, which is made and do. Okay. Uh, first, phrase verb with meaning and example. First, do without. Uh, the meaning is manage without example. We have to do without the holiday this year as many is, sure, is so short. Second, do away with. Meaning abolish. Slavery was not done away with until the 19th century. Third, do out of, meaning prevent from having. Example, he did me out of my rightful inheritance. Four, do up, meaning renovate, fund into a bundle faster. Example, we're planning to do up our bedroom at the weekend. If you do up the newspaper, I'll take them to be recycled. Five, make for mini move in the direction of example. Let's make for the city center and find a restaurant on the way. Six, make of meaning thing, opinion. Uh, example, what do you make of him? Seven, make of meaning live hurriedly. Example, he made of as soon as he heard their car turn into the drive. Eight, Make up for meaning compensate for example the super food at the hotel made up for the uncomfortable rooms. Nine make up to meaning be nice to in order put together constitute form construct complete create and prepare example he made up to her until she agreed to help. Ten make up. Meaning, compose, invent, constitute, form, put cosmetic on, prepare by mixing together various ingredients, make something more numerous, complete. Example, take this prescription to the chemist and she make, make it up for you. 11. Wake up. Meaning, manage to see, understand, claim, write, complete. Example, can you make out the little grey house on the shore? I find it impossible to make Joe out. He made out that he had never loved anyone else. Most expressions referring to work or the tea used to wear us, those which lead to an end product. For example, tea, a cake, a noise, a toy boat, a profit, a noise. Work for, work for, which means uh, one word that can mean many meaning. Understand, understand? Okay, uh, for example, makeup. Makeup uh, can mean a story, her face, and excuse the prescription. Next, next, makeup, a check. A check, a case for her defense, some figures in the distance, the outline of the course, a shopping list. Next, do it. A cup of tea, a cold drink, some help, some advice, something to eat. Next, do up the bedroom, your button, her dress, the house, your coat. Example of conservation question. First, do you make friends easily? Do you like making phone calls? Do you like doing house chores? How do you feel about doing homework for this class? Have you ever done yoga? Okay, now it's the time for the quiz. First, I'm going to really make an effort to do my best this time. <clears throat> Second, right, I make up my mind. I'm going to do the cooking this week. 
Third, I'm going to do a project on the history of the world. That sound this that sound difficult. Are you sure you made the right decision? Four, I wasn't pay, paying attention to the teacher. So when it comes to do the experiment, I make a fool of myself. Stuart is a very good at geography, but he do really well in the test. He didn't make any mistake. It doesn't make sense. I think he cheated. Six, I think the Amazon is the longest river, but I will do some research just to make sure. Seven, have you made any plans for the afternoon? No, could you do me a favor? I need to move a wardrobe. Sure, I'll come around later. And last, she spent the evening watching black and white film and make or do her nails. That's all from us. Thank you. Wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, let me invite the next presenter, that is Asma. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good morning. Wait, wait, wait. Shh. Ini saya nampak, nampak slide tak? Yes. Slide. Yes. Boleh kan? Yes. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to everyone. Uh, I am Akmar, the presenter of my group that is group 6. Uh, that is me, uh, Amira, Aina and Najah. And our topic is about idioms. Uh, we go to number one. Idiom number one and idiom number one is about uh, head is in my mouth and the meaning you can see is feeling extremely nervous, frightened or anxious. So if you go to the question, uh, the question is my head was in my mouth when I saw my dad of the ladder. So the meaning of this idiom is about nervous, frightened so we go to the answer that is B. The answer is B. That is fear. That is in Malay, uh, in Malay we can uh, say takut ah, rasa takut sebab he saw his dad fell off the ladder. Tangga. And the next idiom, go to the idiom, uh, it drives me up the wall. That is uh, the meaning of the idioms is about annoyance or angry, something that makes angry because the meaning is something that makes you angry or idiot. idiot. So, uh, if you go to the question, uh, the question uh, says that my sister always borrows my clothes and it drives me up the wall. So, we go if we uh, check out the the meaning of the idiom so we can see uh, the most suitable answer for this question is c that is annoyance that it makes him a uh, annoyed when his sister is his, his closes and we go to the third idiom uh third idiom is over the moon and we always use these idioms in our paragraph so we know that uh, the meaning of this idiom is extremely happy and pleased. 
iaitu in Malay we can say rasa mira or selesa. Uh, and if you go to the question, you can see the question uh, says Eddie was over the moon when his parents bought him a new game console. So uh, the meaning is about the happy and also the sentence uh, is about Eddie is happy when he get a new game console. So uh, you can know that the most suitable answer for this question is A, that is happiness. And next, we go to the next idiom, that is William is jumped out of his skin, of, of his skin. So the meaning of this idiom is extremely surprised by something. So uh, we can go to the question. Uh, the question says that, wait, uh, the question says Harry nearly jumped out of his skin when he saw a big snake in the kitchen. So uh, the sentence uh, says that Harry is surprised when he saw a big snake in his kitchen. So uh, we go to the answer option and we can know that the most suitable answer for this question is A, fear, because the idioms is about surprise or fear. That is, in Malay, we can say takut. Uh, we go to the fifth idiom and question. The idiom is uh, red as a beetroot, right? So, uh, the meaning is uh, embrace, uh, itu, which you can say malu in Malay. Uh, usually, we, when we are extremely embraced, so uh, our face will turn into pain. So, uh, let's, let's go to question. Oliver went red as a bread with root when his grandma gave him a kiss in front of his friend. So, Oliver feel embraced, uh, uh, malu, there's a malu, and his face turned into red. So, the idiom is same like the question, like the situation. So, if you go to the uh, question, you go, you go to the answer option. Uh, so, from A to D, uh, so the answer is D, it is embarrassment. Is he feels embarrassed? Next, the sixth idiom. On top of the word of the word. So, on top of the word uh, means you are extremely happy. So, <clears throat> like extremely happy. Uh, so like the education. I felt on top of the world when I won the competition means uh, she feels uh, very happy and extremely happy. So uh, the idioms is like to to give a station of of he, of she, of she feels uh, very happy until she felt that she is on top of the world. So uh, the answer option that is most suitable for this question is uh, is B, happiness. Yes. And go to the next, next idioms. Uh, the idioms is pain in the neck. Uh, and the meaning of this idiom is someone or something that is very annoying or difficult to deal. To deal. Like, in the, like, at the question, uh, the question says there is always a lot of traffic on morning on Monday mornings. Uh, it's a pain in the neck. So in the neck. So uh, it says that it's something that is very annoying and very annoying and difficult to deal with. And we can go to the answer option where where the most suitable answer is A. Uh, the annoyance. 
and last one uh last one is the games is quite long uh the games is wanted to ground to open up and smell me like the actually uh it's about embarrassment like you are extremely embraced so like explanation of these idioms is you wish you get you could you could have escaped for being to embrace that like, you can see in the picture like he like he cover himself in the what uh i say in the rumput lah at the rumput so uh it means it shows that he is very embraced so uh if you go to the question i fell off my chair in the middle of my french class and he felt embraced malu so i just wanted to go up to ground the ground to open up and smell me like uh he just want he would just want to cover himself because he is too embraced so the answer is uh the embarrassment itu malu uh i think that's all from me so yeah, thank you uh thank you for an amazing presentation uh so let me invite uh the next presenter that is kubina Sorry for that. I will start now. Uh, can you all see my screen? Uh, it is ready. Uh, uh, what? Sorry, yes or no? Uh, it is loading. Loading. Uh, Anis, can you see my screen? Uh, you already share screen, but it is uh, tengah loading. Oh, it's a little slow. Ah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's loading. What about now? Uh, ah, okay. 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 Uh, very good morning to teacher and the rest of the audience. Uh, I will. I'm from group seven, and today I will be presenting, uh, what my group has done, which is idioms plus expression with tick. Um, I will be explaining further based on the question. So let's head on to the first question, which is find the meaning of the idioms below in the given sentences. The pictures are as references. The idioms have been underlined for you. So let's go to question one, which is uh, we see the idiom uh, which I've highlighted. Take your time. Don't rush into anything too fast before you are truly ready. So here we are given a multiple of options and the answer is C which is the meaning of the idiom itself. When we don't want someone to hurry, take as much time as you need, it means take your own time. So here, the use of the sentence, which is don't rush into anything too fast, is actually a stimuli for us to find our answer as well as the picture. So we shouldn't just um, assume that uh, the idioms given has a direct meaning. No, usually idioms, they have a linear meaning. And to find the answer, we usually see the sentence given as a stimuli or even the picture. So this one is quite direct. And we'll go to the further questions. The second question is also the same. Find the meaning of the idioms below. You have been working hard all week. 
you should take it easy for the next few days. So we see here, the sentence says working hard and then you should take it easy. So definitely we can already have like, um, we already know that um, it's contrasting with the sentence. So it should have a meaning that that is saying um, we shouldn't take it so hard anymore. So when we look at the answer options, A, to relax and do nothing, it has a, a connection to the, to the idiom itself. B, to accept something. C, to understand something fully. Or D, to postpone or cancel an appointment. So here the answer is A, which is to relax and do nothing. That is the meaning of the idiom, to take it easy. Moving on to question three. Students often take time out from social media sites during exam week. A, always do the work or habit. It does not have any uh, connection to what we are trying to tell here. B, take a break from a work or habit. C, spend time with something useless. Or D, feeling annoyed when do something. So you see here, students often take time out. Take time out means we allocate some time to do something else instead of what we usually do. So the meaning that has a connection here is B, take a break from a work or habit. Next, the boy think that the man who sent a post on his social media hit people. The boy always takes something literally. So it's all right if maybe you don't understand the word literally. You don't really have to understand each and every single word in a particular sentence. As long as when you read the sentence and you try to get a hint of what it means. So let's look at the first option. Do something carelessly. The boy... Um, we look at the sentence again. The boy think that the man who sent a post on his social media hit people. The boy always takes something literally. It does not mean the boy always do something carelessly. It does not have like a connection or a hint with the sentence. So moving on to the second option, which is believe that the action was right. Um, this doesn't actually bring a specific meaning to what we are trying to tell here. C, do not think wisely. Or D, believe someone says rather than understand their general meaning. The answer is uh, D, which means um, we don't actually investigate further. We just believe whatever that comes into our social media or, or we believe something directly. Okay, so I hope um, everyone understands. Um, question five. I think he has taken a shine to your sister. So find the meaning of taken a shine. So here, maybe this is quite unfamiliar. But um, as what I've said, um, idioms don't really mean directly. So um, taken a shine doesn't mean like all of a sudden you are shining or anything of that sort. No, it means... Um, C, to begin to like someone very much. I'm sure like some of you weren't even expecting such a meaning. That's why I said certain idioms, they have a, um, a linear meaning. Okay, so I think he has taken a shine to your sister. You look at option A, does not like someone. If, if just say you think the answer is A, it couldn't be A because he has taken a shine, a shine. So like a, the word a shine actually gives a hint that it might be something good. So um, A uh, is not the option. Okay. B, to try to ignore someone, also the same meaning as A, so no. C, to begin to like someone very much, taken a shine, it has a connection there. And D, to try to take someone inside our memory, that has... Uh, no relevance with what we are doing here. So the answer is C, to begin to like someone very much. Next, question six. He's always taking a dig at me. The same goes here. It has a linear meaning, which means don't... Um, when you read the sentence, he's always taking a dig at me. It does not mean that he's making a hole in you or he's digging at you, no. Um, it means C, to insult a person... By, or say something to bother that person. Um, although you might, you might see that uh, the option D, which is to scold or bother, might be similar to C, but here we are looking at the most specific meaning. So um, among all the options here, A, making a hole in something is definitely uh, irrelevant. B, joking with someone might also be an option, but between these three options, which is B, C, and D, we must already understand 
and uh, we must know what is the specific uh, meaning of taking a dig. And um, here, our answer option is C, to insult a person or say something to bother that person. Okay. And now, question seven. Okay, question seven and eight is a little different. Find the suitable idiom. Now, we are finding the suitable idiom based on the meaning or the picture or sentence given below. Okay, this is the picture. Well, both of you did play with the paint, although you were told not to do so. Now, both of you are responsible to clean it up. So, um, the first sentence here is just like maybe a stimuli or a situation given. The key points are here. Both of you are responsible to clean it up, which means two people are responsible of fixing a problem. As the saying goes, it takes two to tangle. It takes two to tangle. C, there is one scapegoat or B bo or D, both are equally responsible. The answer is B, it takes two to tango. I googled what it takes two to tangle mean and it didn't show up any result. That means the, the idiom or the phrase it takes two to tangle is wrong. There's no such thing as it takes two to tangle. Um, B, it takes two to tango. It takes two to tango means uh, it takes two parties or it takes two people to be uh, to make a mistake and both of them are equally responsible to fix it. Uh, there is one scapegoat means there is only one person to blame. That means, for example, in a problem, uh, a problem is done by three people, but only one, pe only one person is to be blamed. And D, both are equally responsible. This is the meaning of it takes two to tango. It is not an idiom, so um, we eliminate D. It's not an answer. So the answer option is only B, it takes two to tango. And here the picture is as a stimuli. Definitely, you see, tango is a type of ballroom dance. So, like, it can help you to think what is actually the answer based on the picture. And finally, question eight. Um, Harry Lev Leverison uh, dash sprint men cycling event in Olympic Tokyo 2020. So here we have a multiple of options because it is it has a syn uh, synonym meaning. Uh, a, take part in, B, participate in, and C, join in. D, take a rain check is um, definitely out of the question because take a rain check uh, actually means um, you decline an invitation now but will accept it later. So the answer is definitely A, B, or C. But if you, are, if you ask me, I would choose A because A is an idiom with expression take. Harry Leverison, take part in Spring Men's Cycling Event in Olympic Tokyo 2020. Uh, the meaning is to be actively involved in something with other. That is all from uh, my group and me. If you have any questions, please do answer. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I am Alia Masara from Group Nine. So, um, today I'm going to present my presentation about present verbs. So, let me introduce you to some of the present verb and also its example and the picture of the meaning. Uh, the first one is look around. Uh, meaning to turn your head to see what or who is around you. Uh, the second one is look out, uh, or we can say is to remain alert of your surrounding or something, maybe towards some dangerous stuff or uh, anything else. Main. The third one is look down on, meaning when you consider someone or something as unimportant or with little to no value, the opposite of yesterday's present book. It does mean like you uh, maybe you uh, you're not liking someone, so you look down upon him or her. 
The fourth one is ran into, meaning when something collides with another object by accident. The fifth one is run over, meaning is when someone is injured or killed by a vehicle. The sixth one is breakdown, meaning when someone loses self-control and is emotionally or mentally agitated. This meaning has a noun form for a situation where someone loses self-control. Uh, maybe someone who have having a mental issue or something is always having this breakdown. The seventh one is break off, meaning to stop speaking or stop doing something for a time. Just like when you are having a re relationship with someone, so you are going to break off with them and take your time to calm yourself after uh, an argue or something. The eighth one is break in, meaning to enter a place illegally and with the use of force. By the picture, you can see that there is a robber that trying to break in a house. So uh, he's trying to break the window using a weapon and something, and it is illegal. The ninth one is break out. There is the differences between the break in and also the break out. The uh, break in is you trying to enter something, a, a place, but break out is to escape from a place or situation or a way of life. Uh, and the, uh, the next one is close down, meaning when the activities of services of a business permanently end. Usually this happens uh, during this pandemic. You can see there is a lot of factory which is being closed down because they are going bring bankrupt and also being terminated or something. The next one is close off meaning to block an entrance or pathway. When there is maybe a landslide or earthquake, there must be this close off road that which is being um, look around by the police or the, uh, the fireman to watch out. So there is no one will go to this road um, and pass to the dangerous way. And the next one is doze off meaning to go to sleep unintentionally, meaning that uh, when you are maybe doing something like you are driving or you're studying or you're drinking, but suddenly you sleep, but you didn't mean to sleep. It just happened uh, out of nowhere. <laughs> the next one is drop in, meaning to visit someone unexpectedly or without making arrangements first. Uh, this is like when you are having something at your house, maybe you are doing some house chores or something, then someone uh, you hear a knock, uh, knocking on your door and you see someone that comes to your place without telling you anything, without giving you an announcement that they are, they are going to come to your place. The next one is fool around, meaning act in joke, frivolous or in a teasing way. It, might, it means like, uh, you go to somewhere and then you just act like you don't care about anything and you just tease everyone and do some and, and freaking out and do something a mess. The next one is freak out, meaning when someone becomes irrationally upset or angry, sometimes to the point of confusion. Uh, when you're mad, then usually you will be freaked out by something or maybe you are having a night with your friends and then you are shocked by them, you're surprised by them, and then you freak out. There's something like that. And the sixth thing is find out, meaning to become aware of something or someone. You're trying to find out who is going to be the real culprit of uh, investigation. The next one is fill in. As you can see by the picture, there's um, fill in the blank that we usually see in the paper, in our exam paper or something. Meaning to add personal information in blank spaces of an efficient document. The next one is fill out, meaning to complete complete a form. There's a between between the fill in and also fill out. Fill in is usually, usually about personal matters and fill out is about uh, more like to our exam papers. 
And the next one is fill up, meaning to fill something completely. In uh, just like the pitcher given, just like you're uh, uh, pouring a water into a glass. The next one and the last one is dress up, meaning to wear formal clothes or a costume for a special occasion. It means like you're wearing a stu suitable one to a uh, something. Uh, so let's go to some of the question. Okay, uh, as you know that we are going to have a multiple choice question. First, if your parents wait the form, then you can go on the school trip, said teacher Nisa. So which one you will be dressed? Um, form up, form up is just like when a group uh, coming to a place to form up after they are uh, to have a reunion or something. So the next one is fill up and also check up. So the perfect answer, it must be the fill up because uh, it was stated there that there is the form. So you must fill something. The next one is the teacher said, you must wet the blanks, your answer on the paper. Um, first, A is fill in, B, write in, and C, find out. How can you find out at least uh, you're having an exam paper? Uh, write in, of course, we need to write in, but the perfect answer must be fill in because um, as you know that Usually, we are having the instructions fill in the banks with the correct answer, just like that. The third one is, you must wait properly because it's an formal event, said her mom to the daughter. So, A, fool around. How can you be fool around, fooling around when it is an formal event? So, you must be some kind of serious or something. And B, dress up. And C, watch out. Are you going to just watch out to everyone that having uh, that attending the formal event? Not right. So it must be B, dress up properly. The next one is she always wait her just because her daughter always get bad grades. So um, which one you can think of? A, look up on. B, ran into. C, look down on. Usually we have uh, we're kind of having some hard time, so we're get, getting bad grades. So usually, what usually someone thinks of you? Well, will she look up on you or ran into you? No, of course not ran into. Or she might be looked down on you after a while. So C, look down on, because getting bad grades. Five. Quick, I had a manager is going to wait at any time soon, said Maria. Uh, a, break off. Wait, break off if what? B, break in, break in into what? The manager is is something that is related to the maybe of a factory. So it might not be the break in one. So the C, drop in uh, to come um, without giving any announcement or notifications. So C must be the perfect answer. Drop in. Six, he didn't mean to wait while studying, but he seemed to be, to be very tired. He didn't mean to wait. So A, doze off. B, freak out. C, fill out. So when you see the words tired, will you freak out when you're tired? Not right. Um, and C, fill out. Why are you going to fill out? If you are tired, and there is also no, there is no form or papers or documents that you need to fill, right? Uh, so it must be the perfect answer must be A. Those up because he didn't mean to sleep while studying, but he just did it. The next one, there is someone that went into the principal office to steal the exam paper. A. Break in. B. Break out. C. Run over. Break in is come into a place, break out, is to escape, and stay run over. There, um, there is no way that it must be run over, and also the breakout one. So the perfect answer must be A, break in, because there is someone that is trying to enter the principal office with a uh, force. But uh, because usually principal office that are having the exam paper in it, they will always lock in. Um, and last one is, would you wait my dog for me this weekend? Uh, as for the last question, we have 
three uh, real answers and there is one um, terminated answers so um you must find the three synonym so a take care of b look after c look up and d keep an eye would you wait my dog for me this weekend what will you do if if it's related to the dog will you take um will you take care of or will you look up so um by this choices you can see that take care of look after and also keep an eye is just the same so the perfect answer and the real answer is add which is take care of um look after and also keep an eye for the dog that's all thank you Uh, thank you for a very nice presentation. So, let me move on to the last presenter, that is Kavi. Okay, now good morning to everyone. So, today I'm going to show my app that I developed. So, wait, let me share the screen. Anis, are you able to see my screen? Uh, no. Yes. Okay. So today I want to present my app. So in this app, actually you can know that this app is learned with building PDF files needs. Well, whenever you click the application, you can find out for PDF files to read. You can learn to PDF files and also YouTube videos as well. So YouTube videos is actually, when you watch, you can get to know an extra information. It's this YouTube video are actually in the app. So you have no need to go to your YouTube video, your YouTube application that provided by Google. So next you can also test yourself by building quizzes. So this building quizzes actually the previous uh, quizzes that presented by other groups and got some extra that will come soon so you also can log in to get your dashboard so let's go and see the app so I, this the logo i hope you all can see so once you click there's a pretty nice splash screen will appear once after a few seconds it will redirect to this onboarding screen this onboarding screen is actually for the person who, for the users who download for the, for the first time. You also can read. So swipe is actually, it means to, you can swipe to left or right. So the next one is study. You also can read the description under that. And once you read everything, you can get to know, once you click the get started, you will redirect to the login page. So for our first time, we don't have our icon, so you can create here. Once you create, for now I'm giving my my own email. Uh, if you realize, uh, users can't cheat it here because it will ask the users to verify their email. So for now, I give my name, my email address. And for the password, we can put any password. For test, I only give nine digit numbers. And for phone number, you also can put your numbers. So I'm giving my number. So now when you click register, it will be loading. Once it load, it will redirect to a page. It's called as learn activity. So my internet is quite slow, so it's still loading. Uh, let's wait. Okay, now you see actually my internet's error. So I have to make sure the internet is strong. It's actually I'm using an emulator, so the emulator will connect to my laptops internet okay. 
I don't know what long time. Can you all see the app? Yeah, now, I think my internet's got some problem. Let me check my internet. I think once you can see, you can see this. Verify your email for the project. This is our project name. So once you click this link, it will redirect you to this place. And you can see your email has been verified. So if you realize the app at your dashboard, there's no any verify email or anything that provides you a warning. So at this learn activity, if you can see, you can go for, you can search for the categories. What do you want? If you click any of these, it will take a few seconds and it will redirect these categories. Or if you wish to search, start a new one, you can directly click categories. I think that's all from Kavi. Eh, no. um, okay. Um. Um. I think. Uh, we lost Kavi. I think. Uh, because uh, he's no longer in the studio. I'm sure because of he's using one of those things that's called emulator. I think it caused uh the internet connection to be very unstable. Uh. But that being so. Um. A uh, good job, everyone, uh, and thank you, Anis, for conducting the lesson today. I'm going to have to remove you from the stream yard. Uh, if, let's say, Kavi is returning, then uh, I'm going to let you. I'm going to let Kavi to be in the studio back again, lah. Okay. So, uh, while doing so, I'm going to share with you the feedback that I have with the work that you did just now. Uh, first of all, congratulations with everything that you have done. It was uh, really good even for each of the group that's um, that's presented, meaning to, to be able to present uh, with such uh, accuracy with the meaning of the phrasal verbs and so on. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to give you a, uh, a very quick feedback on the, on the work that you have done just now. Okay, let me just present it. Okay, why are we doing this? Okay, um, I'm sure that most of you would actually prefer uh, to be able to focus on um, uh, exam-based questions as of now. Me too, but I would like to have more variety of our lessons since uh, based on the current uh, TAKWIM, we are going to be in PDPR up until December. So I think this is a good change for you to have a little bit of interesting activities to be done with your group members and so on. And we are going to continue with our PBL, project-based learning after this. So uh, please uh, stay put. All right. So for the feedback that I want to give for today is that why are we doing phrasal verbs and idioms is that 
Uh, those are very important in elevating the quality of your writing, especially for CFR SPM. Okay, so uh, many of the students have been asking me how how I, how can I get full five marks for uh, language, for example, or for your communicative achievement, for example, because those are the uh, the sections that you can't get a full five um, very easily for part two and part three. So phrasal verbs and idioms would help in getting you to get five for those uh, sections of communicative achievement and um, language. Okay, so it's very important for CFR and SPM uh, paper. Okay, especially paper for pay, uh, part two and part three. Okay, so but you need to remember that for phrasal verbs and idioms, okay, they are for informal or semi formal writing, meaning to say they are not for formal writing. Um, perhaps you can perhaps use uh, a very quick. Uh, things like uh, very quick phrasal verbs such as keep up or make do with whatever you get. But please refrain yourself from using phrasal verbs and idioms if it is a formal writing. Okay, for part two, it's uh, informal, semi-formal writing. For part two, it's sometimes factual and you can put some phrasal verbs there for part two. But for part three, you need to be able to recognize if you are writing, for example, a review. A review is a semi-formal writing, so uh, it's okay to use phrasal verbs and idioms. Review means film review lah, okay? Or you're writing a story, again, it's okay to use phrasal verbs and idioms. But if you're writing a report or formal letter to the mayor, Dato Banda, or an article, okay? Although an article is arguably can be semi-formal, but refrain yourself from writing uh, using phrasal verbs and idioms, okay? so. Although you know all these phrasal verbs and idioms, you need to be able to uh, recognize what kind of writing that is suitable for phrasal verbs and idioms. And lastly, I want to familiarize yourself uh, to, I want you to familiarize yourself with phrasal verbs and idioms. Okay? All right, so, some things to ponder. Okay, a little bit of feedback of your work just now. Okay, some of you managed to come up with good quality sentences, good quality questions as well for your app and always have your audience in mind. Meaning to say, when you are presenting, please um, please make sure that your audience can see what you're presenting. That is very important. Okay? Right. Uh, next one. Um, I am quite happy with the contextualized examples that you have provided. Some of you managed to even try to put your phrasal verbs or idioms in a, in a paragraph. So it is very fitting and it shows that you really understood the meaning of the items that you are focusing on. And i like to single out two of our own, Kuvina and Alia, for such excellent explanation of their uh, group's work. Uh, this It's amazing to see that. Okay. Uh, okay, Kapitarin is back. I hope that uh, he's uh, stable. I mean, the internet is stable enough for him to present. Okay. Um, all right. Let me just get him back to the stream, if that's possible. Okay, um, so Kavi, are you okay? Brilliant. Yes, I can hear you, Kavi. Um, Carla. Are you okay now? I mean, like, the, is the internet connection okay now? Teacher, did I left for so long? Yeah, I, I mean, not that long. I mean, enough for me to give feedback, very quick feedback. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, do you need uh, do you need more time to present or we can just um um okay i think we are losing him again mm, okay um it's fine all right so i'm going to share the link to the app uh in the youtube description so please make sure that you download the app because we are you are going to use the app for the next upcoming projects that we have Okay, with that being said, thank you everyone. Thank you for uh, being with us up until 10 o'clock. Um, and you are free to go to, back, to go back to your biology classes. Thank you everyone. Bye.